So today we have a crypto program and we're gonna hack it. This is gonna be the same exact hack that actually happened to one of the biggest crypto projects called the DAO, which led to millions of dollars being stolen. Crypto is pretty crazy right now, so in this video we're gonna be talking about it in general, as well as stuff like Solidity and NFTs. Alright, let's head right in. So first, there's this thing called the Ethereum network. The Ethereum network is a blockchain network that allows for programs to be run on it. And what a blockchain is, is it's a decentralized network where everybody in the network agrees on a single chain of events. So if I send someone some money, this transaction will be on the blockchain and agreed on by the network without the need of any intermediary like a bank. Then programs on the Ethereum network are called smart contracts and they're written in a programming language called Solidity. Smart contracts are like contracts in code and they let multiple people make an agreement without a middleman. For example, for buying and selling stuff online, you'd have to go through something centralized like eBay, but with smart contracts, you can make this transaction with pretty much the same amount of trust and security without having to pay eBay some fees. Wow, incredible. So that covers the basics, and now we're gonna be looking at a smart contract that's kinda like Airbnb, and we're gonna try to hack it. But first, a message from a sponsor. I'm just playing, we have no sponsor this week. Last time I had a sponsor, we actually had zero people sign up. I don't even know how that's possible, but yeah, the sponsor scene is looking real rough for us right now. Uncle Kenny's pretty fucked. Uh, so we can just head right into the problem. <clears throat> CakeBnB is a startup that wants to develop a decentralized app for crowdfunding vacation rentals. This company allows people to advertise one-time vacation rentals for a set price P and number N of guests. Anyone interested in staying in a property places a deposit of P divided by N, which can be cancelled at any time before a reservation is confirmed. After the nth person has signed up, the owner can confirm the reservation, collecting the money in the contract. Write a hack that'll allow you to steal funds. So just a summary of what it is, you have some people trying to get together to pitch in on renting a place to stay, and the smart contract automates this process so that when enough money is pitched in, the reservation can be made without needing a service like Airbnb. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so here is the code, and pretty much it does what you would expect. First, there's some values to keep track of which accounts have already deposited money, and the contract starts off with a total price and number of people that would be staying at the place. And then people can call the deposit function to deposit money, cancel to cancel deposit, and when enough money is pitched in, the owner can confirm the reservation with the confirm function. Alright, so the two main functions that we're going to be looking at are deposit and cancel. Going through line by line, first in deposit, it checks that the money sent is the correct fraction. Then it checks that the account hasn't already deposited money. And if this is all good, then it changes the value so that we know that this account has already deposited money. Then in cancel, first it checks that the account has deposited money already because, you know, you can't get a refund without depositing money first. And then, if this is all good, it sends the person money, and after that, it sets the values to show that this person has now not deposited any money. Okay, get your gamer juice ready, your knuckles cracked, your gamer chair reclined, cause it's hacking time. And also, if you want to pause the video for like a couple seconds to think about it, now's the time. Alright, let's head right in. The hack is called a re-entry attack, and it's when a function is re-entered before it's able to be finished. The main idea is that when cancel is being called and sending us money, before it's done, we re-enter cancel to get more money. And yeah, if this doesn't make sense right now, don't worry about it because we're going to be walking through it. In cancel, what happens when this call function is called on this line is it sends money to the specified account, but what it also does in Solidity is it calls a function named a fallback function in the other account. And now in the fallback function of the attacker smart contract, we can recall the cancel function, which is called re-entry. Alright, so it looks something like this. First, let's say we've already deposited money and we call cancel. It checks that we've deposited the money and then it sends us the money. It also calls the fallback function in our attacker code, which inside of we can check that there's money to be taken and then re-enter the cancel function. The values to see whether or not we've deposited money yet haven't been updated, so it still thinks that we've deposited money. 
Then it sends us the money and calls the fallback function again. It's gonna do this over and over again until all the money deposited by other people is taken. And yeah, that's the hack. And again, it's the same hack that happened to one of the biggest crypto projects called the DAO. Amazing. Okay, so now let's do it and see if it works. So it's actually pretty chill. In an attacker smart contract, all we need to do is first deposit money and then call the cancel function. Then in the fallback function, we check if there's still money to steal. And if there is, then we recall the cancel function. So to try it on a test network, there's money already deposited in the BNB smart contract. And as we see here, we have around 100 ether in our wallet. Okay, now let's run our attack, send the funds back to our wallet and see what happens. So before we had around 100 ether in our wallet and now after stealing the funds, we now have 200 ether in our wallet. Yeah, so the code's pretty bad, so let's try to fix it. The main problem is that the values to see whether or not the account has deposited money or not yet is updated after refunding the money. So to fix it, we can move it to before refunding the money, and now if we have the re-entry, the values will be updated and the attack won't work. Yay. Alright, well, that was actually kind of a grind, but now we're going to be talking about NFTs. So NFTs are really booming right now, uh, most commonly known in the form of random pictures of apes that are being sold for millions of dollars. And I feel like people explain this super complicatedly, but it's actually not complicated at all. All it is, is proof of ownership of something online. So in the real world, you can own a painting and everybody knows you own it because it's in your house and everybody can see that. It's all good. But online, it's actually really hard to prove ownership of something like a photo because everybody can just screenshot it and you wouldn't know which one is the original photo. But if this digital ownership is stored on the blockchain, then everybody agrees on the same record of who owns what. So ownership is publicly available and verifiable. And this is what an NFT is, a record of digital ownership. All right, so you might be thinking, can't people just screenshot it still? And yeah, you're definitely right. They can still screenshot it, but they wouldn't have the original copy, which is publicly known on the blockchain. And then you might be thinking, isn't this really dumb? Because who cares if you own a picture, if I have the same exact picture on my camera roll because I screenshotted it. And yeah, honestly, I think it's pretty dumb too. I think some crypto people would like be pissed at that, but you gotta understand that we're talking about art. Uh, I would say that it's actually pretty illogical to begin with. Like there's a museum for non-visible art and that shit flies. What matters is that thousands of people are willing to spend million dollars to own a picture of a monkey. And yeah, that demand makes it worth how much it is. And the demand's only growing. Honestly, I don't know how long this hype will last, but the underlying technology that NFTs work on, which are smart contracts, have applications way past NFTs, so that's why I think it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, that's about it. I hope it made sense and was at least a little bit entertaining. Um, yeah, an update on my life is that I'm finally done with finals, so I'm at home now. School is a fat grind, so that's why I haven't really been posting much. I'm actually working at a crypto company this summer. Uh, no, this is not because I was rejected by HRT. Why would you even say that? And yeah, I think that crypto is really cool. It's like everybody in the field is pioneering a little bit. And you guys know how I'm always like, I want to like change the world and things like that. So I actually think that Web3 and crypto is a way to do that. So yeah, it's pretty cool. My uncle Kenny is still in jail for molestation and I'm still trying to free him. But yeah, other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Shorty want me so bad, do your knees hurt? Yeah, I'm counting paper crop in my beam mine In my beam mine, yeah, yeah. If you want one, now you coming with a paper I ain't texting, shot